Casper, I thought there were some really good numbers in here and um, better than the market expectations, which is why it's interesting to see how negative early on the shares are called. Um, I presume it's around the fourth quarter guidance. If you look overall, we've improved our profit from the second quarter with 1.1 billion and our revenue growth by 30 basis points, you know, 30 percentage points. You know, the outlook we've given is it's taken in the current context. And if you look upon Europe, in many countries in Europe, including the UK, it's in close down. And I do think it's important that we recognize we are st still standing in the middle of a pandemic. And if we can trade more or less at the same level as previous years, we're actually quite happy about that. We're still extremely optimistic about the future. And so it's in that context uh, we are guiding the way we're guiding. You also have to take into context that the market went up, you know, almost explosively yesterday based on the COVID uh, vaccine uh, announcement. But overall, we're very happy with the second and third quarter, a great step in the right direction. Can we talk a, a, a little bit about the, um, um, the, the margin and margin evolution that you're expecting then running through fourth quarter and into early 2021? Because it does look to be strong. If you looked upon the third quarter, Martin, was very close to previous years, despite all the challenges we've had. And we expect, as you can see across Martin, on the same level into the fourth quarter. And we've, what we have focused very much on has been healthy inventory levels across the channel to ensure that we don't have a carryover inventory. And that's why we're managing our, you know, our P&L and our balance sheet very prudently. And that you can see very clearly, both on the gross margin guidance for the fourth quarter, you know, the, the actual numbers on the third quarter, but also you know, the EBIT margin in the third quarter where you see, as I said, very previous, uh, very, very close to previous uh, quarters. Uh, so overall, we believe that, uh, that you know, the course we've taken with a high focus on a strong balance sheet and a very strong p &L is the right focus in a very volatile market. Casper, the market this morning seems to also be a little bit concerned about what we're seeing in Asia. APEC sales declined by 7% in the third quarter with Greater China recording a 5% decrease. Can you give us a bit more color around the absolute latest trends that you're seeing in China and around the region? We still see a very strong market in China. We experienced uh, strong double-digit growth in our D2C business, so our direct-to-consumer business in China. We saw a decline in our, what we call our franchise business to ensure that, as I said before, we're keeping a very he healthy level of inventory positions in China. So we're still very optimistic about China. Uh, it has been a great market in the past. It is still a good market for us and will continue to be a good market. And that was really, you know, I would say, substantiated by the double-digit growth we had in our D2C business in China in the third quarter.